Hi folks and welcome back to the Advantage Applications channel. My name is Rich and in this video I'm going to show you how I automate Outlook from access to send an email whenever a new record is inserted into a particular table. And I'm making this video because somebody who had viewed one of my previous videos about an event reporter that I'd created asked about exactly how I go about doing that. And as with anything there is to do with computers and especially Windows, there's more than one way to accomplish a certain task. So I'm going to show you the way that I did it, particularly in that database that I was demoing that day for that video. And there's actually a simpler way that I tend to use when my databases are connected to SharePoint. And my next video is going to be about that. But uh, go ahead and stay tuned for this one because it is good to know how to automate Outlook from VBA code, whether it be an Access or another Microsoft Office product. And don't forget, if you want to become a member to my channel, you'll have access to all of the files that I go over in these videos, including source code, which you can, of course, then use in your own projects or just to study. It costs about as much as a cup of coffee a month, and uh, it really helps the channel out. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into how I automate Outlook from Access for this database. This database is a very simple event recorder, and now we're going to improve it by having an email automatically get sent to designated recipients whenever a new event is submitted. Just a quick overview of how this application works. When the main form is opened, it auto-populates with the date and time, as well as the currently logged in user. Users can then select the location that the event occurred, then they can provide a brief description of the event. I'll enter Coffee Burn, and under Event Type, I'll choose Health and Safety. Then when I click Submit, the event is recorded and the form controls are reset. If I open the Submitted Events form, I see the most recent submissions at the top of the list. There are also a couple filters at the top of the form for selecting viewing periods. We want our notification email to be sent when the user clicks the Submit button. So the first thing we'll need is a table with the email recipients and their email addresses, like the one I have here. Next we want to open our form and design view and go to the code in the click event of the submit button. I'll put a link in the description to the video where I explain what this code does. But for this video, all we need to know is that we want to put our new code just before we reset the form's controls. And we're going to put the code into a new subroutine, so I'll call it email event notification. And I'll copy that name, come down to the bottom of my code, and create the new subroutine. OK, now we can create our variables, or at least some to get started. We know we'll need an object variable for the Outlook application. And we'll need another for the email object. We'll need a string to hold our email body. And we'll need another string to hold our email recipients. We'll need a SQL string variable and a record set variable. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is to get the email addresses for all of the recipients into our string variable. And I'll do this with a function. The return type of this function will be a string, of course. I'll need to declare a couple variables, including a string variable, to hold our SQL statement for querying the recipients table, and a record set object variable. My SQL statement will be very straightforward. I'll just say select email, which is the field in the recipients table that contains the email addresses, from table email recipient. Now I'll create my record set object using the SQL statement that we just defined. And if you're unfamiliar with working with record sets and SQL statements in VBA, be sure to check out my video on that topic. I'll put a link to it in the description also. Okay, now that our record set object is created, we need to iterate through each record and get the email addresses for each person listed there. I'm going to do this with a do while loop. So do while our record set end of file equals false loop and be sure to always move to the next record so we don't create an infinite loop. 
Okay, and now I could start using the function name just like a string variable and keep appending the email addresses to it one by one. But I don't really like to do that. To me, it seems more readable to just declare an output variable as the same data type that our function will return. So I'll do that now. Dim output a string. And now we'll use that to store the email addresses. So output equals whatever is already an output. And I'll concatenate a semicolon and a space. Then whatever is stored in the field RST email for each record in that record set. Now since we're adding a semicolon and a space, the very first time that loop runs, it'll place those characters at the front of the string output. So we'll need to clean that up before returning the email addresses. So here I'll say if output isn't empty, then output equals mid output starting at position 3. That way we skip the leading semicolon, which is at position 1, and we skip the following space. Then we pick up at the first real character of the first email address. And that'll be more clear when we actually step through this once and I'll show you what it returns. And if none of this is real clear, let me know in the comments and I can make a video on string parsing and access VBA. Okay, now, since in this if statement I test to see if output is empty, I need to set it to empty when the code first starts to run. So I'll come back up to the top and just assign an empty string to output. And now, finally, I can use the name of the function to return the value in output. And that completes this function. Now it's time to build the body of the email. And this can be as simple or as detailed as you need. I like to include a few details about the event being submitted, and I like to handle it in its own function. So I'll come down to the bottom here and create a new function called build email body with the output type of string. And just like in our function to get email recipients, I'm going to declare an output variable and set it to the same type as our function. And now I'm just going to start putting data into our output variable. The first thing I'll do is let our recipients know that the email is auto-generated and being sent to inform them that a new event has occurred. Next, we'll include a few data points. We won't include everything, but let's say we'll let our recipients know the date, the location, and we'll include the description as well. And it's worth noting here that in my production event report tool, I format the email body using HTML, but for this demo, we're going to keep it simple and I'm just going to use plain text. If you'd like to see a video on formatting text using HTML, let me know. And as I'm including this data in my output variable, I'm just going to reference my form controls to get the info that I need. When it comes to location, since it references a combo box, I'll need to make sure to get the column that contains the text value, not the identity value of the selected location. So if I look at the underlying SQL that populates that combo box, we see that we have the location ID column, and then the location column, which contains the text value we want. Now when I reference that in code, I'll say column 1 because combo boxes have a zero based index. So the first column is column 0, and the second column is column 1. Alright, now it looks like I forgot to actually concatenate these values, and instead this code would have just overwritten whatever was already in variable output. So I need to go back and actually say that output equals output and my new values. Alright, what else? Yes, let's make sure to put a carriage return slash line break after each of these data points as well. Now we can conclude the email. And I like to put a support contact in mine. And now we're ready to return our output value. Oh, and a quick note here. The reason I was able to use the values of these form controls to populate my output variable is because when we first call email event notification in the code, we do it before we call the routine that resets the form controls. So all of the values are still present. 
placement of the call to the email event notification routine is important. Okay, now let's check to see if Outlook is already open, and if so, assign it to the object variable Outlook app. We'll use the get object function for that, and we'll omit the first parameter, so I'll just put a comma here, and then for the second parameter, I'll pass it the string Outlook.application. If that causes an error to occur, we know that Outlook isn't already open, so we'll need to create a new instance of Outlook. To do this, we'll call the createObject function and pass it the string parameter Outlook.application and assign the returned instance to our object variable Outlook app. With the Outlook app established, we're ready to set up our mail object. To do this, we'll use the Outlook application method createItem, and we'll pass it the object OLMailItem, which is an intrinsic object. We don't need to define it manually. Now, using the OBJ mail object, I'm going to use the with statement to populate some properties. The first one is the to property, and I'll just assign it the value stored in my variable strRecipients. Next, I'll populate the subject property manually with the literal string new event notification. Then for the body property, I'll assign it the value in my string variable str body. Next, I'm going to evoke the mail objects method to send the email, but I'm going to comment it out for now because I want to display it first to confirm that everything looks as it should. Finally, I'm going to set my object variables to nothing. and we're ready to test it. I'll put a stop in the code here so we can step through everything we've written. Event date and time is auto-populated along with reported by. I'll select offices as the location and I'll enter coffee burn as the description. I'll select incorrect procedure as the event type and click submit. And right out of the gate I get the error variable not defined and it's highlighted OL mail item in the line of code where I attempted to set the mail object variable to a new instance of Outlook. So since this is an intrinsic object, my guess is that I forgot to reference Outlook in the code editor here. So I'll stop the code and come up to the Tools menu and select References. And sure enough, I don't see Outlook as one of my selected references. So I'll scroll down until I see Microsoft Outlook Object Library. Select it then click OK. Now I can come back to my form and click Submit again, and this time no error. Alright, now I'm going to start stepping through my code. First, into our Get Mail Recipients routine. And I see it works correctly so far and makes it through an iteration of my do-while loop. So I'm going to let it play through to the end now. Then I'll check my output variable, and sure enough it has the email addresses in it. Alright, stepping on into my build email body function, and another error. This time it looks like I've misspelled VBCRLF for a carriage return line feed, so I'll correct that. And after I step through these lines of code, I see that my output variable appears to have my body text in it. Excellent. So onward now, we'll attempt to set our Outlook object variable to an open instance of Outlook, if one exists. And I get an error here too, so I'll just click and drag the yellow arrow to the next line of code. And since an error did occur above, because there wasn't already an open instance of Outlook, the code will now attempt to create a new instance of Outlook and assign it to our object variable. It thinks for a bit, and then code resumes, and we have our Outlook instance running in the background. So I continue to play through, and our mail item object variable is created without issue and our properties are set without any problems as well. And finally, when I play through the display event, we see a new email message flash for a second and a new icon on the taskbar. It looks like a success. We have our email recipients where they should be. We have our subject line and email body in closing, and also our support statement. There are a couple of things that can use some fine tuning. For instance, there's no space after the semicolon in the event location line, 
Our description looks good, but there should probably be a new carriage return line feed after the description before the closing statement. Other than that, it looks good. So I'll go ahead and play on through to allow everything to reset correctly. Then I'll make those code corrections. I'll put a space here at event location, and I'll put an extra carriage return line feed after event description. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, if you want to become a member of the channel, I'll put the link in the description below, and that gets you access to all of the source code in these files. And something of note, um, I did notice when I tried to run this on a second computer that I have, I did keep getting that error that it couldn't create an ActiveX object when I was trying to set my object variable to an existing or open instance of Outlook. If you encounter that, you can just bypass that. You don't have to um, set your object variable to an open instance of Outlook. You can just skip over that and go to the code that creates a new instance of Outlook for these purposes. And then when you set that object variable to nothing later in the code like we did in the, in the video, you'll see that it, it clears that right up. So you won't have two or more instances of Outlook running, but it'll create its own instance for sending out this email and then it'll close it out and move on. So if you come, if you come across that error and you can't seem to get it to clear, just bypass that bit of code and you should be fine. Thanks for watching and take care.